The gun that won the West. President Theodore Roosevelt's favorite rifle. The weapon of choice for sharpshooter Annie Oakley. The gun that John Wayne carried in stagecoach. The Winchester name has long been held in esteem among enthusiasts and pros alike. But what gives it its legendary status? Why do people religiously buy and collect Winchesters even to this day? And why is this classic American gun manufacturer nowhere to be seen today? Born in 1810, Oliver Winchester started as a clothing manufacturer in New York and Connecticut. But in 1857, he sensed an opportunity of a lifetime. After realizing that a division of the Horace Smith and Daniel Wesson Enterprise was failing, he assembled venture capital with other stockholders and acquired a controlling interest in the volcanic repeating arms. The volcanic rifles with fixed metallic cartridges flopped in the market, and Mr. Oliver Fisher purchased the bankrupt firm's assets, relocated the business from Connecticut, and organized the New Haven Arms Company. He had everything in order, but what he truly lacked was the brilliance of a genius. Luckily, he had an ace up his sleeve, Benjamin Tyler Henry. This gunsmith reworked the volcanic model and invented one of the first reliable lever-action repeating rifles alongside the Spencer rifle. The Henry rifle was chambered in 44 and sold around 12,000 units. The military authorities were not a fan of repeating rifles because of their excessive cost, but the Henry rifle became exceedingly popular among Union troops in the American Civil War. Meanwhile, the Confederates were not so happy about that damned Yankee rifle that they load on Sunday and shoot all week. Benjamin Tyler's contributions to American firearms were undeniably significant, marking a milestone in the industry's evolution. Despite his pivotal role, he increasingly felt undervalued and unfairly compensated for his endeavors. This sense of injustice led him to pursue legal action in an attempt to claim rightful ownership of New Haven Arms, the company he believed owed him proper recognition and compensation. In response to Tyler's legal challenges, Oliver Winchester, the company's founder, employed a strategy he had previously utilized and rebranded the company. This tactic aimed to navigate the legal complexities and protect the company's interests amidst the dispute with Tyler. The Winchester then modified the Henry rifle by adding a loading gate on the side of the frame and a round sealed magazine covered with a wooden forearm to produce the Model 1866. The Civil War had ended and manufacturers started focusing more on civilian markets. In addition, the settlement in the American West coupled with the military conflicts raging in Europe created an opportunity of a lifetime for the company. For instance, France ordered 6,000 rifles with 4.5 million Henry cartridges during the Franco-Prussian War. The Ottoman Empire surpassed the French order with 45,000 units in 1870 and 1871. Repeating rifles gained widespread popularity, paving the way for the iconic Model 1873. This revolutionary firearm, chambered in the groundbreaking 4440 cartridge, was heralded as the gun that won the West. The new model exploded in popularity and the company had manufactured 720,000 of them until 1923. They were produced in three barrel variations, 24 inch, 20 inch, and the rare 30 inch musket for military use. The units that were unusually accurate and performed exceptionally better than the rest in testing were set aside given a luxurious finish and sold separately. These highly coveted premium grade versions were labeled one of 100 and one of 1,000 and were first revealed in 1875. The one in a hundred grade rifles were sold at $20 higher than the retail price, and the one in a thousand grade rifles were sold for a 100 back then. To this day, they are highly sought after by collectors. In 2014, a 73 model rifle was discovered leaning against a juniper tree in Great Basin National Park. It had clearly witnessed some tough days, and the Facebook post sparked great interest. The public could not believe it. The ensuing interest brought it to media attention and many theories have since come to light. But perhaps that's a conversation best saved for another day. Impressed and overwhelmed by the success of 1873, the company was hard at work to make further improvements. The decision was to use the full powered cartridges suitable for big game hunting like 4560, 4575, and 5095. 
and thus arrived the Centennial Model 1876, about which Teddy Roosevelt would say, by all odds the best weapon I ever had and now I use it almost exclusively. The rifle obviously packed a punch and acquired a reputation for its durability. In 1880, Oliver Winchester passed away, leaving his company to one of his three sons, William Wirt Winchester. However, the following year, William also passed away, leaving his widow with a substantial fortune. Sarah Winchester believed that ghosts of those killed by Winchester rifles seek to torment her. She consulted a medium who suggested that she keep renovating the family home. She did. And now the Winchester Mystery House seems like a maze, an architectural monstrosity, with staircases leading to nowhere and doors opening onto walls in a desperate attempt to trick the ghosts. Getting back to the company, we have to look at John Moses Browning, one of the greatest gun designers in American history. He was told that the iconic Winchester 73 and 76 models could not sustain their place in the market over multiple decades. They needed something more robust, so he upped the ante with the Model 1886. Winchester had long wanted to chamber the 4570 government cartridge with no success. They tried it with the 76 model, too. Now Browning had finally done it, and the 86 model could even handle 4590 and the huge 5110 express cartridges. It was later modified to shoot 33 Winchester cartridges and the all-powerful 348 Winchester cartridges. Browning went on to produce the 92, 94, and 95 models, but none could rival the success of the 73. He also helped the company produce other firearms like the Winchester Model 1885 single shot, Winchester Model 1887 lever action shotgun, and the famous Model 1897 pump action shotgun, also known as the trench gun. Another popular pump action was Model 12, which became one of the most popular firearms in the early 20th century due to its smoothness and reliability, but it was not designed by Mr. Browning. But Browning designs were manufactured by other firearm companies, so the rifle manufacturers were closing in on Winchester. Another firearm designer, T.C. Johnson, helped them produce self-loading rifles like Model 1903, 1905, 1907, and 1910. Iconic models like 73 and 97 did not wane in popularity, but the arrival of the First World War posed new challenges. The increase in demand affected production capabilities, and for a company like Winchester that was aiming for civilian firearms, it spelled disaster. The company started producing pattern 1914 and Enfield rifles. However, they had borrowed massively to expand their operations, and the move to consumer goods also hurt their business. By the Great Depression, they were going bankrupt. The Western Cartridge Company, owned by the Olin family, bought them at a bankruptcy auction in 1931. By 1944, it had turned into the Winchester Western Division of Olin Industries. You might have noticed that we're in the timeline of the Second World War, the Winchester Division, produced the M1 carbine that was issued to the U.S. military and during the Korean and Vietnam Wars. They also produced the M1 Garand and M14 rifles. Labor costs jumped after the Second World War, and disagreements with labor unions heavily disrupted the company's operations. In 1964, cost-saving production changes affected the quality of the firearms, and the term pre-64s was coined. The regulations and legal framework around gun manufacturing in the U.S. further dented the company, not to mention that the special rifles they were making were not selling well. The market had moved on, and suddenly no one was interested in lever-action rifles when they could get their hands on a semi-automatic. Olin Industries also made two unsuccessful attempts at diversification, and the Winchester brand lost more face in the market. In 1981, Olin sold off the New Haven factory, and it was rebranded as U.S. Repeating Arms Company, which also went bankrupt in 1989. It then became a subsidiary of the Herstel Group, a Belgian arms manufacturer. Things, however, didn't get better. And in 2006, the New Haven plant closed. The Olin Corporation entered into a new license agreement to produce some rifles and shotguns. Production has now shifted to Japan via the Moroku Corp. 
there are also plants in Belgium and Portugal. Given how the production became outsourced, American customers feel a tad disconnected from Winchester. Even though the Miroku guns work well, they lack the oomph and innovation to set them apart. The XRP bolt action produced in Portugal and the Super X3 and 4 shotguns are good examples. As of 2023, the ammunition sales for Winchester have declined in every quarter. 14% in the first, 17% in the second, and 8% in the third quarter. Once the quintessential American brand, it has truly fallen from grace. A lack of innovation and resistance to growing with the trends has left it trailing in the past. And now it remains a relic of the past, a glorious relic, but a relic nevertheless. If you found this video interesting, hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel for more content like this.